Hi. Today we're going to take a look at something called the electrolytic cell, the second part of our electrochemical cell series. First thing is the basics about how it operates. First of all, the definition of the word electrolysis is to break apart using electricity. Lysis means to break. In my particular example, I'm going to take sodium chloride salt and break it down into sodium and chlorine gas. Now, first off, in order for this technique to work, the charges must be free to move because in order to conduct electricity, you require mobile charges. So in the solid form, the ionic salt is not able to carry electricity. In its molten form, when melted, it can because the ions are now free to move. Let's look at a few basics about how the cell operates. First of all, we have an external source of electrical energy, a battery. We also have a couple of inert electrodes. Remember that this must be done at very high temperatures to ensure that the salt has melted or the, is molten. So often platinum might be used or inert carbon electrodes. Our external source of energy, the battery, up at the negative terminal, electrons will be repelled in the wire from the negative terminal and driven down the electrode on the right hand side. There, the sodium ion will be attracted to the electron. There, picking up the electron, it turns into the sodium metal. And this process is called reduction. You might recall the phrase cats go gur. Reduction by definition always takes place at the cathode. Similarly, on the other side, electrons are drawn up the wire towards the positive terminal. There, chlorine is now drawn to the positive charge that develops and deposits its electron at that electrode, converting itself into the chlorine molecule at the anode. Now, these reactions can be put together to come up with the overall cell reaction. You'll notice in this case, though, that the sodium has, needs two electrons, not one, in order to balance. So I have to multiply that equation by two. Now I'm in a position where I can add the equations together to get the overall equation for the electrolysis. Now a little bit about the states of our products. First of all, the sodium that's produced at the cathode, remember this is very high temperature, so the sodium solid would soon melt and form a small pool directly underneath the electrode. Chlorine is a gas, and that gas will soon rise through the molten liquid and move into the air up above. Let's compare the cells, the electrolytic, which we did today, and voltaic from the past. First off, the electrolytic cell takes electrical energy and converts it into chemical energy. Voltaic cell does the opposite. It takes chemical energy and converts it into electrical energy. The electrolytic cell requires an external source of voltage to drive the reaction, whereas the voltaic cell produces electrical energy. The electrolytic cell is not spontaneous, and the voltaic is. And what I mean by spontaneous is, is let's consider a ball at the top of a hill, a slight push and it will roll its way down to the bottom, completely finishing the motion. Whereas if I take an electrolytic cell, I start the ball up the hill, it'll soon roll back down the hill. The cathode and anode also have changed their identities. The cathode is negative in the electrolytic cell, whereas the cathode is positive in the voltaic cell and vice versa. Now, as far as the similarities go, we always have the cathode is where reduction occurs. And cations, whether they be present in the molten salt or whether the cation be present in the salt bridge, they both move towards the cathode. And similarly, our anode is where oxidation takes place. And anions, whether again in the salt bridge or in our molten electrolyte, will always move towards the anode.